Hey there and welcome to my latest landscape photography video here in Tasmania. Today I'm down the sunny, well not so sunny, east coast of Tasmania. It's been a very cold sort of a day. There's been this beautiful looking cloud hanging over all day and unfortunately it's been blocking the sun and there's not a real lot of colour temperature around at the moment. But what I'm going to do is come down to this beautiful beach and try and have a play around with a couple of different time exposures with the water in the background and this beautiful cloud cover behind me. So I'm just going to go and have a look for a really good composition with some of these beautiful east coast rocks in the foreground and see if I can come up with a nice image on this cold afternoon here in the east coast of Tasmania. So I have just set myself up on this beautiful beach here down the east coast and the mood here is quite sombre given the dark clouds that we've got hanging overhead at the moment and there are some beautiful lines of texture through these clouds as you can see starting to brim on the horizon. The sun to the west is just starting to poke through the clouds, it's just starting to clear so I've probably got about half hour of good non-shadowed light at the moment and then it'll be interesting to see what it does when the sun does come out. What I'm doing is just timing these waves. I have got a really heavy stopper on the front of the camera and I want to try and give this a real timeless feel, this exposure and take all the motion out of this picture completely. So I've got the camera on at 35mm and I'm focusing on these beautiful rocks in the foreground here and here's that wave I've just been waiting for crashed in and I am shooting this at 8 seconds at f11 and I'll give you guys a look at what I'm doing here and what I'm trying to do is create a sense of timelessness with this exposure like I just talked about but I'm trying to isolate these rocks between the beautiful turquoise coloured ocean with that nice line of white caused by the crashing waves and that exposure at the moment is just a little bit underexposed so I'm going to bring that up to a whole 15 seconds and once again wait for a crashing wave because I feel that it's just a little bit dark at the moment also with these exposures sometimes I find that hitting the shutter as the wave is retreating from the scene looks a lot better than a wave coming in. What I found that when the wave tends to, what I found when the wave does disappear back on the horizon is you get these beautiful streaks of water as the wave is retreating. But when it's coming in like this, it tends to have the opposite effect as the water's too deep. So this water is just disappearing now over my 15 second timer exposure. I'm going to wait here a little bit longer just explore this beach for probably the next half hour and see what these cloud formations behind me do. Maybe a little bit of brilliance from the sun will help make them pop a little bit more or maybe not. So stay tuned here on Tasmania's east coast. So I have just literally raced into place for this one last exposure which I think is going to be for the day. Um, as you can probably notice looking through this video at the moment that there's a lot of shadow starting to kick around which means the sun's almost at full bright mid-afternoon here down the east coast and what that's going to do is it's going to interfere with my exposures by shortening them up drastically and it's also going to put highlights and shadows in places that I don't want them. 
what I have got is a pretty cool image and I'll just give you a quick look at what I'm looking at. What I've tried to do is I've tried to use those two boulders in the foreground and just shoot straight through the gap, which gives me a nice little window into that beautiful coloured ocean in the background. With my camera, I have put it in portrait this time and the reason for doing so is to help capture some of these beautiful clouds high up into the sky here as well as down on the horizon and you can probably notice to the southern part of my frame or which you guys will see is the right hand side of my frame is it's starting to blue over on that side of the horizon which is something I don't want in this image at all so I've deliberately put it in portrait to cut that out and help isolate this scene. Camera settings are quite short in comparison to the last exposures. I've gone f16 at four seconds for this one and I'm just waiting for that sun just to disappear in between these intermittent clouds behind me and also trying to time another wave to get some nice contrast around these rocks in the foreground. Without the wave crashing in I've just got rocks on sand and these rocks are a dark sandy kind of a colour so I've really got little contrast at all. So having that white slow motion water in the foreground is exactly what we're looking for to add a little bit of drama to this scene. So I've just waited for that little break here and I've also got a wave coming in which is awesome and far away. And just looking at that, my exposure is quite good. I've got some nice lines in the exposure there, in the foreground. I might go and check out the other side of the peninsula here. And as promised, the sun has started to come out here a little bit late afternoon down the beautiful east coast. As you can see, I'm standing on top of some beautiful big sand dunes here, which is quite a contrast to where I was down on the rocky foreshore. I am going to have a look around for a composition here, shooting out onto that beautiful ocean there in the background and with that real gnarly sky. The trick to this photo is to find a spot which helps minimise some of that foreground or that big punch bowl of sand in the middle part of the landscape here. I just feel that if I get a composition that's dominated by that big punch bowl of sand then the viewer might get lost in what I'm trying to portray here. So I might just try and duck in behind some of this marin grass here on the side of the hill and perhaps I can just focus on that as a foreground and just drop the background in behind that. So I'll just have a fish around here for a few minutes and try and find a nice composition. Shooting across these beautiful sand dunes is a little bit harder than what I thought. Um, facing one of a photographer's second worst nightmares apart from water and that is sand around all your photography gear and to make this sand even trickier it's blowing pretty hard which is causing a lot of the sand to blow across the surface so I'm really trying to minimise how many times I put my camera gear down to restrict the sand blow in my face and my gear. I just left my tripod unguarded there for a moment and blew over into the sand and I just spent probably two or three minutes trying to get all the sand out of it which isn't fun. I'm just coming up the top of this beautiful big dune and I'm thinking I might just frame a section of this dune off into the horizon. I'm just finding that Focusing on that grass or those, the marin grass in the foreground just isn't enough to add impact to this picture. Plus the light has flattened off once again. And man, these dunes sure take it out of you trying to run up them as well. Trying to chase a nice composition as I'm rapidly getting out of breath. And I've just made my way to the end of this beautiful dune. 
and I think I found something that might make a good composition on the brow just here. And I just lost my camera again. I'm really getting hammered by the wind off this sand dune here. And like I said, I think it's the next worst enemy to water dealing with wind and sand and I can hardly see what I'm doing. And I really am gonna focus on getting this last composition for the day. What I have done is set myself up on where you can see the edge of this sand dune. And instead of focusing on an overall big landscape vista of sorts, I've decided just to make this another very minimalistic landscape. And what I'm doing is I'm just going to frame in the classic rule of thirds here at the bottom of this sand dune against this beautiful green ocean on the right hand side and the top two thirds of the frame is going to be dominated by this beautiful moody sky which we've got at the moment. I'm just going to set my horizon again on this camera because it's just taken a fall like that and put my filter back into position here and I don't really need to focus on a long exposure here. I'm not dealing with trying to get motion blur across the water. So I've just got the camera on F11 and it's going to be the first exposure at a 15th of a second here. And I need to duck my head down. I've just got a little bit of shadow bouncing across me onto this dune. And that at a 15th of a second looks fantastic, but I might just do a darker exposure for the sky at F11 here at a thirtieth of a second. And what I really like about this image is how, if you can see this sand dune, or on this brighter one, how this sand dune folds away and meets this ocean here, which almost levels off with this beautiful ocean in the background. I think that's it for me for the day and I think I've tolerated as much sand as I can both in my eyes and in my camera git which I'm going to have to spend a bit of time brushing out this evening but that will be very enjoyable here down the east coast of Tasmania with a nice cold beer or a glass of red wine at the same time so stay tuned for my next landscape photography and wilderness adventure here in Tasmania.